to the permission of the family, Hachamim. We're here this morning to mourn the passing of one of the pillars of our community that I always named the Nair Tamid. Whenever I would see him, Felix, my dear friend, you are the Nair Tamid. Anyone who has ever been to Ahbab Ahbab, five in the morning or late at night for the Minyanim, every single Tehillim reading, every single Simha, every single Mitzvah, Felix Alava Shalom was the bond, the glue that brought everyone together. At every occasion, after the rabbis had spoken, he would get up and he would read and he would list the family, the fathers, the grandfathers that he knew personally. He was the center that combined everyone together. He was the center of the circle of our community that gave us the bond to the past. And he laid down the roots and the seeds for the future. Iov says, arom yasati mi imi. He said, I came into this world naked from the womb of my mother. The aroma shuv shama. I am going to return naked to my Creator. That is the destiny of every single man and woman to come into this world naked with nothing and to leave this world naked. Adonai Natan, Badonai Lakah. God has given and God has taken back. When a person comes into this world, he comes truly with nothing but a neshama tehora. The hacham lev, yikach mitzvot. When you return, even though your body is naked, what do you bring back with you? You bring habilot, you bring mountains and mountains of mitzvot. Felix, Sadia ben Miriam, Allah shalom, had mountains of mitzvot that he did. Which mitzvot are the most cherished in the eyes of God, teaching children the future of the generation? A person who teaches a child how to read, how to read Sefer Torah, a person who teaches a child how to pray, he has given him a life where wherever he goes, he is going to feel that the synagogue, that the Beit Knesset is his home. He's going to feel at home. He's going to feel that this is my place. As the rabbis say, Asay betacha betvad hachamim. Where should you feel at home? In the place of the hachamim, in the place of prayer, in the place of the community. Felix is in the center. Allah shalom. He always was, and he always will be. One of the happiest things that he used to tell me, many years ago he said, Rabbi, I have to tell you, I just taught, the Bar Mitzvah boy that I just taught was number 613. Decades ago, he was gay with that. He loved it, his passion, and that is what he lived for. So whereas he had the connection to the generations before, he reached back almost 100 years 
to our ancestry, he planted the seeds of the future. How many people here learned their bar mitzvah? Their fathers learned their bar mitzvah from Felix. Their grandchildren learned their bar mitzvah from Felix Alaba Shalom. This is a mountain of mitzvot that continues to give and to give and to give. And whereas he slept at home, but his home was the synagogue. The Kohen Gadol, and we know, as I said, Felix was a Ner Tamid. But lighting the candles, the rabbis say, when you light the oil, Laha'alot Ner Tamid. Laha'alot means to bring it up, to raise it the way he raised his students, the way he raised the younger generation. And how could it be a Ner Tamid? It's, you light it once, why is it Tamid always? Because when you light the light of a person's nishama and you bring him close to God, it shines forever. Those are the mitzvot. Hacham lev, yikach mitzvot. He brings the mitzvot with him. The mitzvot that he had are the mitzvot that God gave him to do and he used it and to, to beyond the level of what he was given. As the rabbis say, Ner Adonai, Nishmat Adam, the candle of God is the nishama of man. Felix Nishama came into this world, Tehora, and it returned to God, Tehora. He left behind a legacy. His dear wife, Frida, and his children, Solomon, Joy, Moses, Maria, and Rachel. He raised a generation of Torah-fearing children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And all of his students are considered to be his students. May his memory be blessed and may we continue in what he lived, a life of Torah, a life of community, a life of faith, and a life devoted to God. Amen. Kitisha et Rosh Bene Yisrael Lifku Dehem. Moray Rabbotai, today with the party, legend in Ahba Ahba, a living example of Ibad Hashem, Sa'adia, known as Felix, we used to call him Sa'ad. Sa'adia bin Maryam. Sa'adia ala shalom lived almost a century. Who am I to conclude and summarize lifetime story of such a man? But from my experience, I will say a few words. Sa'adia ala shalom was mashkim u ma'arib le batek anesiyot u batek midrashot. The Gemara telling us that even though the Torah promised long life, but it's only in the Holy Land. Le ma'an irbu yemechem bime benechem al ha'adama asher nishma' Adonai la'avotechem latet lahim. But outside of Eretz Israel, it's impossible. When they told Rabbi Yohanan, Ika Sabeh be Babel, there's all people in Babel. He said it's impossible, it's against the Torah. When they told him that these people, they come first one to Betakenesent and leave late at night, Amal Hainu de Ahnilahu, 
This is the reason why Hashem blessed them with long life. Felix was a living example of Mashkimu Ma'arim Vatek Nesiyot Vatek Midrashot. The big zechut, the dedication, the love to the shul. But Felix was something very special. Kinor Hayataluy. A violent was hanged on Ahabah the Ahabah congregation for 50 years. This kinor, this voice, this sweet voice, the sweetest voice that I heard in my life, and I heard many beautiful voices. Kinor ayataluy ma'al Ahabah the Ahabah. And with this kinor, we worship Hashem with this beautiful tune and voice that enhance so much the decorum and the feeling in our shul when Felix was the Hazar and leading the Tefillah. Ki tisa et rosh b'nei Yisrael lifkudahem omer agaron mishmerot kiuna when Hashem take away rosh head of a family elderly man rosh B'nai Israel, lifku dehem. Velo nifkad mimenu ish. From the meaning of Hissaron. Felix is going under the Kalfah Shekhinah. The Shekhinah will hug him. Borah will tell him Baruch Abba. Thousand millions of Malachi Asharet that was created. By his each word of tefillah, Rabotai tefillah of Ahaba ve Ahaba. Oy lanu miyom adin. Where we been and where we have now? Tefillah word by word. Nobody in a rush. Nobody hinting to the Hazan. Nobody want to switch Hazanim. To hire a special Hazanim that they know how to pray in 30 minutes, 35 minutes, 37 minutes, every second it's a count. The Kari'at Shema, the, the last day that he was praying in the shul, you can read it today in the speed that what people are reading today, five times Kari'at Shema, and he still will be the man of Rechel Yimeh Benechem. Kari'at Shema is the heart of the Tefillah, Kabbalat on Malchut Shema, the Al Mesmot. You can have all the kabbalat of Sidur and Rashash even. Word by word. Seven to ten names in every paragraph. You can be in a chaven as much as you want with the reading of Felix. We lost it. Lifkudehem. The Hisaron who is lacking is we are lacking. He's not lacking. We are lacking the old timers. That the tefillah was so sweet in the mouth. They were enjoying the words, eating the words, chewing the words. Eben Shalema, word by word. What we at today? Ba'avonot harabim. When I have to struggle, what to say first, what to say first, what to, in order to catch up. With Sa'ad, it never was a problem. And Sa'ad, there's many like him. We're missing out the beauty of the Tefillah. The meaning of Avodat Hashem. We're not losing out of them. We have to look for Kapara. We have to look for a way that Hashem will substitute the zikhut of the fillah the chabana word by word by missing out such a man. Moravi Rabbotai, Felix was born in a small town called Tanta. He grew up in the city with Arab Burda was a Hakam from Eretz Israel, that was the chief rabbi and the Dayan in the city. With time, economy in Egypt was very good. 
People start to move out of those small towns to the big cities, Cairo, Alexandria. People left Tanta, Mansoura, Nesuef, Banha. Those towns that mentioned the Chuvot of Arambam, Lekehal Banha, Lekehal Zazik, Lekehal Mahal Al Kobra. Felix learned one of the very few till the end. If somebody wanted to have a kosher chicken, Felix used to go from one small city, there's five families in Tanta, there's ten families in Banha, there's few families in Mansoura. He used to travel because of his business and always the Sakit Shahita in his pocket. And he goes and slaughtered the Shahita, the offer for the people. So they can eat basal kasher. You don't know it. And by the way, in my office, I kept a lot of his writing. He used to write to me all the time, Berachot. The man was full of Berachot. And he gave me his semichal, shetat ofot, ofachem in the book, la'ala v'shalot. So, I don't have to say more. There's much more that he did. But we are the ones that are losing out. We're missing out an example of our letter share. Our children are looking up today to who? Who are the heroes in our community? Who? I'm not going to tell you. Who are the other people who have to be like? Not like Felix. This is our measure today to measure success. Ma'abunut al-Rabbi, Ba'adat Hashem, Hashem will give the family kawak. You have the kawak, and then you have to strengthen you. You have iron in your blood. Your mother, Farida, hand by hand, struggle. Struggle. In the best age to come to America, Seattle, Washington, and then here, find job, and Felix was the responsible husband and husband, father. Changing jobs, being food in the house, selling the house to the best location of the community to have his children. What a father! I was a father to many people too. And this koa will give you, by Dr. Shev, the ability to continue to keep the fire of our Dr. Shev. May I share with you how much you are with that after all the speeches will over, we're going to say, a tool of the Chayri, the last paragraphs, to give him some sweet text before he leaves us, and then the rest will go and let us shame. The end of Israel, the Tilak so much, the soil that he will be buried will be sweetened in his mouth. Amen. <laughs> We say every Monday and Thursday and share when I abadu men of faith we have lost we come through the strength of their actions. Giborim Namoda Perez, they're strong, they can stand up in the breach. Yodaim La Atol Ratzot, they know how to pray, they know how to entreat. Sa'u Himalim Nuhod. They have traveled, they will travel to Mihara Menuhot and leave us sad and sighing. That was the Pesukim in my head the whole trip from Deal this morning. The whole morning, driving. And I'm thinking, I was Mr. Felix. Alaba Shalom. 
I have to say, I started with him before Ahaba, in the old Ahiyazid 71st Street. Together with the boys, we used to play together, fight together, play together. Felix, Mr. Felix, emerged as the Hazan. We were kids. He would get up every minha Shabbat afternoon with his beautiful voice. Why was his voice and his prayer so accepted? Yod'im al-Atur that sort, why? He had Shamayim. He had fear of Shamayim, fear of God, Abu His voice was beautiful. Many people have nice voices. But when you know who you're talking to, you're talking to Hashem Barach from your heart. You're talking to represent the Kahal. Look at the Kahal Abu today. Look at the crowd. A man who spent almost a century who came with our father, my parents, Adem and Shalom, all of our parents from Egypt, through France, starting out young, starting out with difficulty, making a new life in this country, making sure that the kids will be Bire Shamayim, Dainin, Adadayin. He goes to shul, he's a shul girl. These are not just school goers, the kids, Felix's children, there's community leaders, community builders, each one in their own shul, in their own way. Where did they get that from? The Yirat Shamayim from Felix and his Tibadir Rahim, his wife. We used to look up to him in the later years, wherever I saw him, whichever shul, Ahaba. I went to Florida, he has in. He used to call me Hacham Sami. In the early years, it was without the Hacham. That's how he knew me. As a young boy, also came from Egypt. Also, our parents were friends. And we looked up to him. And we felt the resonance of his voice, of his heart, of his Nishamat Tehura. And then, as was mentioned, the stuff that became legend, how he's taught all these children. This morning I told someone in Deal, I'm going to Brooklyn. Who are you? I said, Mizvah, Mr. Felix. Oh, he taught me my bar mitzvah. Just random. How many thousands of people? How many thousands of children? How many people did he impact? Yes, you know, the aim of Atoro, that's what he knew how to entreat, he knew how to pray. And therefore, Rabbi Tayyip, when a man of that age leaves us, we shouldn't think, okay, 97, Nih, Baruch Hashem. These are the pillars, these are the guardians of our community. We have to feel it, Rabbi Tayyip. We have to feel the loss, we have to feel the lack. And as the rabbi mentioned earlier, we have to go back to our roots of prayer. The sweetness, the kavana, the yirat shamayim. We're talking to Bore Alam. He used to plead with that plaintive voice of his, pleading for our people. He represents us. And now we say, He's going to Haram bin Hot. What is Zikhut and Mutai? To go. We're the one we have to sigh and groan and say, what can we do? To Be'ezat Hashem, learn from him. To Be'ezat Hashem, give him menuhat nefesh through our prayers, through our mitzvot, through our lessons from him to our children. What's the next generation going to look like? Think about it. The next generation who never heard Felix pray. We never saw what he did. They had to get it from us. We have to be the ones. We have to talk about it. We have to talk about our parents. My dear mother, alayhi shalom, passed away a few weeks ago. You know how many times I, I pick up the phone to call her? I can't call her anymore. 
I want to ask her questions about Egypt, about France. All the time I had questions. I go to my mother. Who going to ask? Who going to talk to? That's a side lesson about that. A side lesson. Talk to your mother. Call your parents. I told this the whole week. Talk to your parents. To your grandmother. Teach your kids. Call grandma. Nah, they don't relate. Of course they relate. They're smarter than all of us. About a piece of the old school has left. And Chayim Muna Abadu. So tomorrow morning when you say that, think of Felix. And think of how his praise would be. As the rabbi said before, there's no question he's going to go up to Shamayim. And he's going to represent the, the heavenly praise. He's going to do the praise. They're going to invite him. Kabod, Sa'ad, Badda. He's going to pray. He's going to pray for his wife, for his children, his grandchildren, for the Kahal that loved him. That was the Ner Tamid, that he was the pillar of all the shuls that he prayed in. And all the shuls that now his children continue to better, to strengthen. And Abutai, let us remember this. That our prayers could make such a big difference. Our elders are our precious treasures. Let's respect them. Let's revere them. Let's hold on to them. Amen. <laughs>
running all around. But when you heard Mr. Turgeman, when you heard Felix pray, it was a different world for you, even if you were a child. Respect God with all your talents. You should honor God. That she says, Whatever talent God gave you, that she says, even if it's only a sweet voice, don't call it from your talent, from your throat. Rabotai, he certainly used his throat to serve Hashem. Ahiyaz at 71st Street in the 60s was towards the end of the 60s were becoming a dying neighborhood for Syrians. Everybody was moving out. Eventually they opened up Ahiyaz on Oshid Parkway. The rabbi had to move to Oshid Parkway. The official Hazan had to move to Oshid Parkway. Mr. Turgenad said, don't worry, I won't leave you. For 20 years, he was the Hazan and the Baal Koreh. He read the Torah. And when he moved, he walked to Bensonhurst. How much did he get paid? Zero. He would not take a dollar. As long as he had a job to feed his family, he would not take a dollar. He was the shipping clerk for BB Continental for 49 years. 49 years, Rabotai was a shipping clerk. What does it tell you? This was a man who was Mr. Pek Bimuat. He was Sameach Behelko. He was satisfied with his lot. Where did he live on May Parkway? 74th Street, I'll never forget it. Sixth floor apartment building, him and his wife. Sixth floor. And we used to play in Sethlow Park, especially in the summertime. We used to play all day. We went to shul in the morning. Mr. Dayan made a minyan for us. He gave us breakfast. We went to the park. We came back from Minha. Who, which parent would come to the park looking for us? Mr. Turgeman, you didn't eat lunch. He would tell them, go home. Dad, I can't go home in the middle of the game. La, la, you have to eat. Rohi, honey, you have to eat. So they set up a system. <laughs> Mrs. Turgaman, Hashem Yishmire is here. What was the system? Mr. Turgaman created a basket on a wheelie. From the sixth floor, it would come down with snacks for us. Oranges, peaches, apples, drinks. Who had money? We didn't have money. You go to, to Turgaman from the window, like man, Mina Shamayim, he came down. Okay. How he cared, how he cared for his children, how he cared for us, how he cared for all of us. The Mesirut Nefesh, the self sacrifice for Shul. I lived on East 10th Street, and on the next block, Felix Turgaman lived on East 10th Street. And I would be walking, and he would be walking, we'd be going in opposite directions. We would meet Shabbat morning. Rain, snow, shine. I'm talking about when he was maybe already 90. He would have a big fur Russian hat tied up, freeze. He was, he was bones, he wasn't a big man. He would be walking, trudging through the snow, Rabotai, through storms. You knew you were gonna meet him on the street. Nothing could stop him from going to the Beit Knesset. never. The man lived in this country for I don't know how many years, 60 years, didn't have a driver's license. His legs was his license. Never had a driver's license. Walk to shul. Doesn't matter, there's no such thing as an excuse. Nothing. He and his esetayel made sure that the shul was his children's second home. For him, maybe it was the first home. And it paid off beautifully. Look what a family he left. Look what a legacy he left in our time. You know he has children, grandchildren, who are Tamideh Hamim today? Who ever heard of all these Galuyot? And by the way, the rabbi mentioned, Ham Shimon mentioned how he was a shohet in, in, in Egypt. Ham Avadi Shalom was in Egypt. And... He was not happy with the shahita of the official shohtim. They came after him. They almost killed the Chamovadia. Chamovadia told everybody, eat from Felix Turgaman's, from Saadia Turgaman's chickens. Don't eat from the others. He checked him. He saw his shahita. He saw the Yeriyat Shamayim that went into it. 
And he was such a heavy mekabel adam besever panim yafot. Greeted everybody with a beautiful countenance. It didn't matter how old you are, you could be a kid. Doesn't matter who you are, you could be a sanitation worker. He loved everybody. Such a sever panim yafot. Felix, you're going to go sing now with the angels. When the angels are going to greet you and you're going to sing in Shamayi with the angels. You will be more than missed. You're from the Zekinim that we need. The elders that we need so badly. Go and pray on behalf of your wife, your wonderful children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and our entire community. We need you. We need your tefillot. Amen. עשינו פסוק הכולל בתורה יותר שמע ישראל אדוני אלוהינו אדוני אחד בן אנס אומר עשינו פסוק הכולל יותר ואהבת לרעך כמוך שמעו בן פזי אומר עשינו פסוק הכולל יותר את הכבש האחד תעשה בבוקר ואת הכבש השני תעשה בין הערביים. עמד רבי על רגליו ואמר הלכה כבן פזי שנאמר ככל אשר אני מראה אותך את תבנית משכן ואת תבנית קולקליו וכן תעשו. My dear friends, we are here today to pay tribute and respect to the Manoah that lies in front of us, Sa'adya ben Miriam, Ruach Adonai Tenichenu Began Eden, Amen. Although I don't feel worthy to deliver the eulogy, and I will rely on the Rabbanim that have preceded me and that will follow me, but I cannot exempt myself by saying nothing. So I ask the forgiveness for the Manoah that it is quite impossible to summarize anyone that lives for so long. But Kol Sheken ve a man that's life was not only long in quantity, but its quality as well. It is impossible that a few minute dirash can capture almost a hundred years of righteousness, sitkut, tahara, kedusha, kavanot. I chose a midrash, which is quite fascinating. The midrash says that one of the rabbis, Ben Zoma, he said that he found, in his opinion, the most inclusive pasuk in the Torah, the pasuk that's kolel hakol, and that pasuk is Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. The next rabbi was Ben Nanas. Ben Nanas said, well, I find another pasuk that I believe is all-inclusive. And he said, Love your neighbor as you love yourself. The third rabbi was Shimon ben Pazi. The pasuk that he chose is by no means famous and well known like Shema Yisrael or Ve'ahavta Raka Kamocha. But the pasuk that he believed is the most inclusive. Etake v'sehat ta'aseh b'boker ve'etake v'sashini ta'aseh b'na arbayim. That you will bring the daily sacrifice one in the morning, that's Tamit Shel Shachar, and one in the afternoon, Tamit Shel Ben Arbaim. 
to this rabbi, Shimon ben Pazi, that is the most inclusive pasuk in the Torah, a pasuk clearly that none of us would choose as the most important, especially against Shema Yisrael and Ve'ahavta Le'racha Kamocha. Amad Rabbi, Amad Rabbi al Raglav, the great Rabbi Rabbi Rabbeinu Kadosh, the redactor of the Mishnah, Amad Rabbi al Raglav, he stood on his on his feet, and he said, Halacha keben Pazi, the third Rabbi Ben Pazi, he's right. That's the Halacha. <coughs> What is the explanation of this Midrash? <clears throat> it is clear. Ben Zoma is right. The Pasuk that is Kolel is Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, Kabbalat Ol Malchut Shamayim. The acceptance of God's sovereignty, the acceptance of God's Hashkaha, the divine providence, the acceptance of the oneness of God and the mitzvot. Clearly, Shema Yisrael includes the mitzvot aseh and the mitzvot lota aseh. That's an area that represents our relationship between us and God. Well, the second rabbi, he said, but we mustn't forget that there's a second part of the Torah that teaches us that we're obligated to be cordial and have respect and admiration for each other. Ben Adam la Havero. After all, our tablets are a pair. There's Ben Adam la Makom and Ben Adam la Havero. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Mehad is godly. But don't forget your friend, Ve'avtal Rekha Kamocha. The third rabbi, Rabbi Shimon ben Pazi, I don't think he was arguing on the first two rabbis, but he was defining it. He said, it's true. There are many people that believe in Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. But they fall in and they fall out of it. We hear people that didn't find God until they were 20 years old. And some people... They found God and then they went off the path a little and then they come back. We hear it sometimes in kids that graduate schools. They were very religious in school. Shema Yisrael and they, they take a tour of the world and they leave for a couple of years and maybe they come back. And the same thing, very important. And there's some days that is important and there's other days when in business it's difficult to be or in Shalom Bayit or in community affairs so then becomes put to the side the third rabbi was saying Shema Yisrael is important for sure is exceptionally important but the key is the consistency that's the korban that was called Olat Tamid. That was the korban that was brought day in and day out, every morning and every night. This korban was brought on Shabbat, it was brought on Kippur, it was brought on Purim, it was brought on Shabbat. Defines the consistency of the first two. Shema Yisrael is important, but find somebody that believes in Shema Yisrael his whole life. The timidut, the regularity of it. The Avtel is important. But not only when you're 95 years old. Find somebody that believes in the Avtel and lives that for a century. The last rabbi was saying all these things are important, but they need consistency and regularity. Well, I have a proof that this might be the true explanation. Because when the Rabbi heard the third interpretation, it says, Ahmad al Raglav. He stood on his feet and said, Halachak ben Pazi. Why does he have to stand al Raglav? 
You could say it's sitting. Halakha keben pazi. The word raglav could mean legs. But raglav comes from the word ragil. Hergel means something that a person does over and over. The hergel. He said, this rabbi is right. And to prove it, Ahmad al-Raglav. He said, he stood on his hergel, on the permanence of it. That's what he was excited from the third pasuk. The Gemara, in many places, surveyed the great hachamim. And they asked the rabbis, Bemahe erachta yamim. What do you credit your longevity to? What did you do to deserve Arikut Yamim? All the rabbis gave different reasons why they believed they lived long. But all of the answers have one thing in common. They all begin with the following preface. Miyamai. Miyamai means all my life I did whatever, miyamai. They credited their long life to the consistency of it. That religion is not a fair weather habit or a pastime. That when you retire from life, then you find God and then you stay in the shul because there's nothing else to do. That was not the case when it comes to the manoah that is in front of us. Of course the Manoah had Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. As the rabbi said, five times you can read Shema and he still is up to Leman Yirbu. That's a perfect way of explaining it. The Kabbalah, every single word. Of course he had Ve'aftal Recha Kamocha. As was mentioned, his Seber Panim Yafot. But how many years did he do that? This was a man of Miyamai. That he did it from day one until the final day. I don't think that there is coincidences. I believe that everything is Siman from Shamayim. Sunday mornings in the synagogue, we have a special mood from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. We learn Masechet Makot. That's what we chose. Some days we learn two lines, some days we learn five lines, some days we learn a page. There's no uh, set amount. Well, today we sat down and before I opened the book, I said to Botai, we're going to have to go quickly because I have to go to the Levaya. Who passed away? Sa'adiyah bin Miriam. Mr. Felix Turgeman. Okay, great man. Alava shalom. We'll learn the Ilun Ishmato. So we say, we're going to learn today's Limud, the Ilun Ishmat Sa'adiyah bin Miriam. My word of honor, there's witnesses. We open the Gemara. We put our finger on the word, the word that we're up to. Had Turgeman. We froze. We said, "Le'ilu nishmat se'ajab ben Miriam, bingo hatur geman." That's the word we were up to. My Rabbi Hakam Baruch Alav Shalom. When he saw Mr. Turgeman, he would say the following: "Ata kadosh, v'shemcha kadosh, uvdoshim v'chol yom yahalilu chasena." My rabbi understood that this man is Kadosh. His name is Kadosh. And he praises God like the Kedoshim, like the Malachim. My rabbi was not a false flatterer. And he was a man of truth and justice. And he would not say such a thing unless he believed it. To me, that is a great compliment. No more is to be said. But if I can conclude, in our parasha it says, "Ve'et shabetotai tishmoru." Shabetotai is plural. Well, you can only keep one Shabbat at a time. In the Ten Commandments it says, "Zachor et yom Shabbat." 
Why would it say in the Penasha Shabbatotai? What's the plurality of Shabbat? And I once read an explanation because to keep Shabbat properly, one must commit himself to two parts of Shabbat. Of course, there's the physical side of Shabbat, where the halakha says we must dress in nicer clothes, we must eat ma'danim, delicious foods, different than we do during the week. There is definitely a pleasure for the body. That's one Shabbat. But there's another part of the Shemirat Shabbat that is higher. And that's the Shabbat of the Neshama. The Shabbat of the soul. That one has to spend Shabbat learning Torah, reading the Tehillim, studying Tefillot. So the Torah says, it's Shabbatotai Tishmodu. Make sure you keep both elements of the Shabbat. And the Gemara says, if the Jewish people would keep two Shabbatot, they would be redeemed. Maybe the meaning is not two consecutive Shabbatot, but if they would keep one Shabbat with the two Kavanot of Hana'at HaGuf and Hana'at HaNeshama, that's the Shte Shabbatot. It's Shabbatot HaTishmoru. The Manoach that's in front of us, he kept the two Shabbatot. For many years, he would stay in the shul the whole Shabbat. He would not come home so he could read the Tehillim. The whole Tehillim, he sits in the shul Shabbat. He took the awning of the goof a little, and the awning of the Neshama, he gave a lot. He fulfilled it Shabbatotai Tishmoru. En lanu hadifato, en lanu temurato. There is no replacement for the Manoah. Actually, nobody is replaceable, but some people are more irreplaceable than others. The Manoah that we have here, the factory that makes such people has closed down. A product like this, it's hard to come by. And as the rabbi said, it's going to take a thousand people to fulfill the job of this one man. Sa'adya ben Miriam shakul keneged kulam. Halakha ke ben pazi. Amad al raglad. Amad et akebis ehan ta'aseb aboker. Bet akebis ashini ta'aseb in arbayim. Felix, you have benefited to see perotecha ba'olam azeh. Vakerin kayemet lecha le'olam abba. The fruits are the fruits of your wonderful children. Kulam Kedoshim, Kulam Tehorim, they're following in your footsteps. Your dear wife, Eshet Hayil, Ateret Ba'ala, and of course your grandchildren, all the friends that came here today. There's not an empty seat in this great synagogue, and there's not a room to stand. That is to the credit of the Manoah. He lived the Shem Tov, the Niftar Mena'ula the Shem Tov. He Nishmatos Rab Sola Hayim. Amen. מסכת סנהדרין, קח עמוד ב' אומרת, הספדן, הספדן של צדיקים מעכב את הפורענות. אני, חשוב לי מאוד לדבר כמה מילים לכבוד האדם היקר הזה, פיליפס, תורגמן, שקרוב ל-40 שנה אני מכיר אותו אישית, בקשר גדול. הגמרא בשבת אומרת גם, כל המוריד דמעות על אדם קשה, הקדוש ברוך הוא סופרן 
ומניחן בבית גנזר. החשוב לי שאני עומד מול פליקס תורגמן שלפני שלושה ימים מיום הפטירה הלכתי נבדל לחיים טובים עם הבן משה לבקר אותו דיברנו וצחקנו ועשינו תמונות וסיפר לי מה היה במצרים בטוחני שחכם בורלה שנתן לפליקס את ההסמכה לשחיטה בא לקבל את פניו וראה איך שהוא קידש שם שמיים ברבים במשך כל חייו אמרנו הגמרא בסנהדרין אומרת הספדן של צדיקים מעכב את הפורענות לפעמים מעכבים את הציבור בצורך הספד אבל צריך לדעת רבותיי שהספד של אדם צדיק כזה משתלם לנו ביותר כי זה מעכב את הפורענות מלנו היום יודעים כמה עם ישראל בכל העולם סובל מרדיפות, מאנטישמיות, זה פורענות רבותיי. והספד של אדם צדיק וכשר כזה, הוא דוחה ומבטל את הפורעניות. לכן חובה עלינו, כמו שהגמרא במסכת שבת אומרת, כל המוריד דמעות על אדם כשר ולעולם סופר את, ה... את הדמעות הללו, זה כמו יהלומים בעולם האמת. אני לא יכול לשכוח, רבותיי, דיימן כלם הוא כאן ביהו את כל ואחד נהיית לו מנו איה חגה. כל ואחד נהיית לו בחגה מנו טייב. דיימן הקל מדי על הלסנו, רבותיי, טייב, טייב, טייב. בירדי כל נוחד רבותיי זגייר וקביר אלה ביטלו באומנו בירדיהו טייב פואיס חאמי תאוז אה כדי אמשי כדי חאדר חאדר אנחה מלך אלה אין תאוז די מנביהו את כל נוחד רבותיי אדם כזה תמה היסטוריה של מצרים רבותיי זה סיום של היסטוריה. דנהי תאריך מס אל אדים, אל אפקר אל אדימה, אל לכל לא חל כאן יערבה, אל סמיכה בתעתו, מחכם בורלה, החטא האנדי, מרבוד האנדי. וכל למרה נאבל פליקס, נאול לו חכם פליקס, כל האוכל משחיתתו, סמוך ולבו בטוח שלא ייכשל. כל לוואחד יקון שחיטה בתעתו, כן המכתוב של שמיכה בתעתו כאן, בטוח וסמוך לבו שלא ייכשל. רבותיי, נהי את תאריך רגל כביר אלא רך עלינה, מקונש מאמין, מנטלת ים, קונה עדין מעה. זה הגמרא אומרת כל מי שהשאיר בן כמותו לא מת יעקב אבינו לא מת ברוך השם קם מרק אותו באב לו פקיניס בלי רבי תשקרו אין לך עליו אז חסלתי כפי שהוא על השור לך בס פקיניס אני רק בבית הכנסת כל אחד העמל על שם שמיים בבית הכנסת חלאס משעה זו על אחד מן העולם הזה. רבותיי, דיקן התפעל בו גם את אוי אוי אוי. זה היה בליבו עמוק מאוד. היום שר וגדול נפל בישראל. מנחיה תניא, אין אלו אחד ישופו, עד אי פשוט, עד אי וואלה חגה, מושעו זה נפסו וואלה חגה. כולו, אלה תתלובו, חמל הולה. 
זה רבותיי, זכות גדולה, נפלה בחלקנו. אם הכרנו את האדם הגדול הזה, עם הפשטות הגדולה שלו, זה מחייב אותנו, בעזרת השם, להעתיק דרכו, להמשיך דרכו, ולזכות ביום כזה, שבזכותו, בעזרת השם, יתעכב הפורעניות, שתבוא רק ברכה לעם ישראל, בכל העולם, באירופה, באמריקה, במזרח התיכון, בכל מקום ומקום. ידו מגע שתמנע פורעניות מעם ישראל. והשם יזכה אותנו, שבעזרת השם ייתן כוחות לאלמנה היקרה, לאשתו, לבניו, לילדיו ולצאצאיו, וייתן להם בעזרת השם ברכה ולידי, בזכות האדם הצדיק. תהיה נפשו צרורה בצור החיים והשלום. from my father 35 years. 36 years ago, for the first time, my father-in-law took me to Eretz Israel for the first time. My father came to me before I left. He said, I need you to buy me a place. And so I did. When I got home, he gave me a file. In the file was everything about his life, and there was this envelope. It's 1984. On many occasions, as you all know, he used to like to say nice words about people that he knew in, in Ahbab Ahba, and he would make a darush. And he would like to write the letters. Well, in this envelope, he wrote his own letters. He wrote a letters 35 years ago for himself. I didn't believe it when I saw it. And to make things even stronger than that, he wrote the words that he wants me to put on his stone in Haralim Ha'arot. I'm going to read it for you because that's what he would want. It says, Ish Yashar Vene Eman Be'emuna Rabba Ish Yakar Nahmad Na'ala Hanoda Asha'arim Tehillah מסכים ומעריב לתפילה. מקפל כל אדם בספר דברים, שמחה על כל בלי המילה על המאה. That's what he wants on the stone and, and we will do it. His דרשה starts like this. דרוש for Felix Torgeman עליו השלום. מוריי ורבותיי, we are gathered here to pray, to pay respect and tribute and read Tehillim and say the great Torah to elevate the soul of my father, Sa'adiya Shalom ben Miriam. On behalf of the Torgimim families, the Moseri families, the Shalom families, the Tawa families, the Tusi families, the Sakal families, I do thank you all for coming to share, pay condolences, hoping Ba'azrat Hashem to return your favor on many happy occasions. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, my father, Alaba Shalom, lived 90 years now. I have to stop and tell you, he only thought he was going to be 90. 
This is, he wrote it 35 years ago, but he really lived in 97. So he passed the letter that he thought he was going to live by seven years. Always in Betek and Isiot, you heard before in Tanta, Mansura, Zagazig, Zazig, Damanhur, Porsaid, and in Cairo, Temple Neve Shalom. Now, you heard before that he left Egypt. I'm going to continue the letter, but you heard before that he left Egypt that he brought a Sefer Torah with him from Egypt. Now, how did he do it? I don't think anybody knows it, but my family, I told them last night. He wore it. He wore it under his clothes. He wore it under his suit. He took the cloth out of the sefer. He wore it. He was nervous that maybe it would be confiscated at the airport. So he put it under his jacket. He put a sweater. And he went to Paris. From Paris, we went to Seattle when we had the papers. Seattle, Washington. And he gave the sefer Torah in memory of his brother, Moshe Bechor Shalomo, Turgeman, who passed away in 1956. My father was a quiet, satisfied, humble, generous, modest, religious man, good quality. My father helped the Ahayez congregation for 15, 16 years, I believe. And at the time when he wrote this letter, he wrote to Darush, he already had working with Ahbab Ahbab for 35 years. He was a good Hazan, beautiful Baal Koreh, and also he was a Shohet, as you heard. I have the knife. He gave it to me also. He worked for BB Continental, starting with a salary of $70 a week. He put all of us in school, she bought, and to help to pay the tuition, he worked two times a week, bingo, to complete the tuition for Oher Moshe and Ahayezer, just in order to teach his children the Jewish education. He learned it from Abraham Avinu when Hashem told him, Ma'an Asher Yisavayit. Banan, read, batay aharab maas, bito aharab maasot sedaka mishpat. He always was helping hachamim that came from Eretz Israel to collect sedaka, helping yitomim ve'almanot when they came to Ahbab Ahbab. My father taught 396 bar mitzvah boys. In 19, up until 1984. 35 years after that, I'm sure it's in the thousands. He dedicated his life, his children, Shalomo, Yosef, Moshe, his daughters, Miriam and Rachel, our living testament to a noble and virtuous father who left a priceless legacy more valuable than material possessions can possibly be. Now, the next part of the, of the, the Rasha, for him, at the time, 35 years ago, he was thinking he was going to speak before the Hachamim. <laughs> so it says, now you will hear from all the Hachamim <laughs> that they will speak about my father, and from this Kehal Kadosh, we extend our sincere condolences to my mom, my brothers, sisters, and may Hashem console, comfort all my families and give us happiness after all our sorrow. That was his done, written in 1984.
Vrhala was born in 1921. In his early life, his father passed away, took the responsibility for his family. He was a traveling salesman, selling matches, I believe, and tobacco. Worked only from Sunday to Thursday. He told me. On Friday, he would be a shohayat for the Jewish families in Cairo and all those towns over there. He was doing shahita for my grandmother where he saw my mother. That was it. He married her in 1953. They had three children in Egypt and then we had to leave Paris Seattle, Washington, and then we came to New York. In the early 60s, he worked for Nuri Dayan and David Beebe. They helped us and my entire family. And he's going to thank them again now. He put us to school with, a, with, with, with $70 a week. I don't know how. Father was a simple man. Never had a bank account in his life. Never. Never drove a car. He made sure we had food. Shabbat was the most important and the most important Bet Knesset. I remember Friday afternoon before Shabbat, he would come home an hour before Shabbat with a bag of loose grapes that he got for free from the grocery store so my mother could squeeze them and make one cup of wine. And the holidays, especially Pesach, my father would put on Galabella. It's exactly like he left Rosh Hashanah and Kippur were very strict. He took my mother at 4.30 in the morning to prepare the coffee for the people praying. What lady you saw in the Jewel of You ever see a lady in Zeliachot? He loved my mother. And he gave her a name, I think he called it Banura, not true, Banura. He blew the shofar for the Bet Knesset all of his life, then gave it to me when he wasn't able to continue. He loved Sukkot. He stayed in the shul the whole day, in the sukkah. My father loved Torah and he lived Torah. Someone told me he wanted to test my father by opening the Chumash to any page. He would open the Chumash to any page. He would start the Pasuk and my father would finish it. 1998, we started a Bet Knesset on Avenue S and 21st Street. He was so proud. Very, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. He was proud of the accomplishment. I made sure he came on Sukkot to read our Sefer. He read the Sefer, we gave him the best Aliyah of the day out of respect for a special man paying a visit to Albert Knesset. Then came time for the Mishabirach. He made the Mishabirach himself. He donated his 
life savings. 40, 40 years of a man earning $70 a week, how much can you save? I went to his house. He gave me an envelope of $5,300. That's all he had. He said, take it and build the shoe. I knew, I knew then that we would be successful. Year after year, he would call before Rosh Hashanah, how many people sitting in the shul? How many seats did you sell? I told him a hundred. He would say next year two hundred. The following year he would call me, how many you have? I said two hundred. He said next year three hundred. Daddy, we have 900 people today. We have 900 people praying at the baptism. And next year we will have a thousand. I spent, I spent the last night of his life with him in the hospital. Throughout the whole night, the nurses, the doctors were coming in and putting tubes and putting more tubes through his nose and through his arms and through his veins. And I, I, I had a feeling that it wasn't working. So he was still he was still alive in the morning. I got up, sunrise came out. I started to pray. I went outside and told the nurse, please give me a half an hour. Don't come in the room. I don't care tubes, no tubes. Doesn't make a difference. I started to pray loud. So I hope he would hear me. When I got up to Shema Yisrael, like the rabbi said, I went very close to him and said it, and he shook his head. That's all he did because he couldn't do anything else. And I said, what's the matter? He moved his hand. And then I said it with ta'ameen. And his lips were moving with me. We read the Shema together. An hour later, he had passed. I want to thank my mother for her devotion to him, my brothers and sisters for helping to make sure he was comfortable. But most of all, I want to thank our entire community because he said you were his family. All of you today, and I don't know how many more, were his family. I think like the rabbi said, we have to live and learn from such a man. If you can get only a few percent of what he did and continue, he would be appreciated. Here are some Shihir Shal Salat Zahir, Jatol Kaim. One minute, one minute. Thank you. Joey, you're both on the Oh, 
حسد خيوم سيفاتي بيوم لختي لفاني خارسنا إدها لي خاتي بعمعوسر صنخا تناسخا بعلاتي بل أخي أحين بيونا لعمتي بشالوم بو أخا يوم روب قل إحاد ببيئتي بيوني إلغى نعيد ناخ بشمتي يشيبتي بيتعدل بأورخة بسم كبود منوحاتي بأرجان وذلفة نخة يسفري بسكاتي بتحصي מותרים לך, מותרים לך, מותרים לך, שירויים לך, שירויים לך, שירויים לך, מחולים לך, מחולים לך, מחולים לך, אין כאן לדבר על כך שבו עודם וחלמות קבלות נסכמות בלב. אבל יש כאן מחילה וזה עבר חפרה, בין בעולם הזה, בין בעולם הבא, כשם שהסכימו בדוכם בדין של מטה, כך יסכימו ויתוכם בדין של מעלה ושר עבון אחד וחטאת אחד תכופה לחינו עתה. מותרים לך, מותרים לך, מותרים לך, מחולים לך, מחולים לך, מחולים לך, שירויים לך, שירויים לך, שירויים לך. אין כאן נדרים, אין כאן שבועות, אין כאן חלמות, אין כאן בלות, אין כאן הסכמות. אבל יש כאן מחילה ושחר וכפרה, בין בעולם הזה ובין בעולם הבא. כשם שהסכימו בעיתוכם בדין של מטה, ככה הסכימו בעיתוכם בדין של מעלה. צער עוון אחד וחטאת אחד תכופה לחינו עתה. מותרים לך, מותרים לך, מותרים לך, מחולים לך, מחולים לך, מחולים לך, שירויים לך, שירויים לך, שירויים לך. אין כאן נדרים, אין כאן שמועות, אין כאן חלמות, אין כאן הסכמות, אין כאן קבלות. אבל יש כאן מחילה ושחר וכפרה, בין בעולם הזה ובין בעולם הבא. כשם שהסכימו בעיתוכם בדין של מטה, ככה הסכימו בעיתוכם בדין של מטה, בדין של מעלה. צער עוון אחד וחטאת אחד Thank <laughs> you.